All right, Pisces, let's see what's coming in for the month of August. Going into this full moon in Aquarius. Ooh, ooh. All right, Holy Spirit, angels, and guides, God, universe, ancestors, and the high school side. Let's see, what can Pisces expect for the first week of August? First week of August for Pisces, what can Pisces expect? Six cards. All right, let's see. Single jumping cards only, Spirit. You already know how I roll. Just seeing the door to value and blossoming abundance. Okay, so some of your guys' money could be increasing. What else? You got four chakra, Archangel Raphael. You got the Angel of Love. You got community. So your heart chakra could be open. You may be inviting, calling in new love. Okay, this can also talk about healing from a previous broken heart. Um, some of you guys could be receiving assistance from the community. Some of you guys may be getting out there doing some type of community events. I just heard sports as well. Community sports. Some of you guys could be like coaches or um, just doing something within the community. Maybe giving back to the community. You got cornucopia. I felt that energy. All right, 11 Okay, so this is abundance in all aspects, all areas of your life. I see love here as well. So um, receiving those blessings, Pisces. Okay, this is good. First week of August. You got six chakra, Archangel Metatron. So your third eye and woman holding a heart, number 44. I see 444. Four, four. You got 4444 four, 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 actually. And number 42. So I could be speaking to a feminine. Masculines, you may have a feminine coming in. This is someone who's loyal. Committed, grounded. For some, this could be a business owner with this woman holding a heart. This is um, someone who is empathetic, caring, nurturing, caring, and kind. I already said caring, but whatever. All right, I'm going to read these for you guys. I'll try to run through them to not waste your time, but the book says it's so much better than I do, so you guys may get a message out of here. Four Chakra Archangel Raphael. Um, Raphael extends a blue-green energy surrounded by gentle waves of pink to your heart center. This card upright indicates that you now have a greater readiness to receive love from and oh. This card upright indicates that you now have a greater readiness to receive love from others as well as from yourself. This could also indicate that a much needed healing from a previous broken heart is taking place. The tender vibrations of Raphael remind you to encourage yourself with the compassionate self-talk that you desire to hear from others know that as you do so the light from your heart center will shine with the irresistible beauty of the universe and the universe will send people and situations that cause your sense of love and support to grow and grow so yeah like i said you guys are calling in new love you could be healing from a previous broken heart at least for whoever i'm picking up on okay then you have the Angel of Love, number 49. Um, let's see. Tender Connections. This beautiful angel comes with roses in her hair and rose-colored wings. She holds a rose quartz heart, radiating tender and loving vibrations, bringing you compassion and affection. If you are looking for new love, this angel brings a message of its upcoming approach. Or if you're longing to for a deeper, more intimate connection with someone you already know in your life, she is here to say that a far greater tenderness is available to you now. Either way, remember that your first intention for tenderness must be directed inward and the compassion that you demonstrate towards yourself will influence the energetic potential of those events in a significant way. The angel of love is smiling on you and forging connections in the energetic realm. So something here is being prepared for you, Pisces. Hence this cornucopia card, which means, you know, something's being prepared for you behind the scenes. You may not quite see it yet, but this is coming in. Um, keep, you know, when you nurture yourself and uh, show yourself the type of love and compassion, you know, so if you're out here being reckless, doing reckless things, uh, accepting, you know, engaging with low vibrational energies that's what you're calling in that's what you're letting the universe know that that's what you want that's what you expect that's what you will accept and so you, then when you find out that you meet you know shitty connections or whatever this to me looks like love you know then you wonder why well what are you calling in you know if you show yourself love and compassion and know what you desire and know what you won't desire or what you don't want what you do want then you know the universe can send those things to you 
Um, so even if you feel like no one's watching or, um, or whatever, always know that, you know, you're always being watched by Pisces <laughs> by the higher realm. Okay. So you got number seven, uh, connection with kindred spirits. This card shows three women celebrating, sharing ideas and supportive energy. The lights in this picture represent your ever present spirit community as well. Um, when this card appears upright, it indicates as uh, uh, it indicates an association of some kind. It may be a casual connection of like-minded people joining a club, a community of some sort, or even a business partnership consisting of three or more entities. The time is right to make such new connections and to share intentions, whether they are personal or professional. Networking and community are important parts of human experience, and the security and the sense of sense of connection can be beneficial to all it is true that when several people join their intentions it accelerates their power in the energetic realm receiving this card puts you on notice that the universe is sending some beneficial alliances your way like the happy family card this could also indicate a party or a celebration of some kind okay um yeah so this is you know be on the lookout for you know Joining with others who share like-minded ideas, this can, you know, this could be in many different aspects of your life, Pisces. So, you guys heard what I read. That's why I like to read these to you guys. So, you got number 11. Wishes fulfilled with cornucopia. So, an abundant harvest and great blessings are waiting for you. You may even find all your wishes being fulfilled. The cornucopia of gifts from the universe can come in in the form of financial riches, job fulfillment, romantic love, or all of the above. When you receive the cornucopia upright, um, you know that you have done important work and it is about to pay off. The seeds that you have planted in your energy and in your life are ready to be harvested in some significant ways. Get ready for great feast of abundance value being prepared for you now. And the spirit is applauding you for all of your efforts. So know that the work that you have been doing is paying off. Okay. You guys are about to be blessed. <laughs> Things are coming in. Um, pat yourself on, on your back. Keep doing the work. Your hard work has not gone unnoticed, Pisces, at least for whoever I'm speaking to. And now, if you guys know you haven't been doing the work, then you know this ain't your reading. Okay. And I'm not saying all Pisces are perfect. And not all Pisces have all this, you know, greatness coming in. But you guys know the ones that have been out there working on yourself, you know, taking accountability, doing what's right, um, trying to make improvements in your life. Know that your work has not gone unnoticed. The, you know, behind the scenes in the energetic realm and the spirit realm, things are being prepared for you. You just may not quite see them yet, so keep going. Okay, Sixth Chakra Archangel Metatron, clarity of thought and personal vision. This powerful Archangel Metatron brings brilliant indigo vibrations to your brow chakra or your third eye, which is centered, which is the center devoted to insight and clear thought. When this card appears upright, it indicates that a much greater clarity on your thought process and in your expanded perspective toward broader horizons. Oh my gosh. Some new perceptions uh, are taking hold and the clouds of confusion are clearing. In some ways, this could be a new beginning for you are on your way to developing a deeper insight about what is going on your life, going on in your life and why. Now is the time to focus on your personal vision. Do what you want or what do you want your life to look like in the years ahead? Create a clear picture of that and support it with your daily thoughts. The insight that you need to create a vibrant life is available to you now. So make sure you guys are, um, you know, when I get this, this uh, third eye card, it also talks about like exactly what it said. You know, what do you want your life to look like in five years? And then doing things that support that. So I don't know if you guys are into this, but sometimes vision boards, you know, sometimes people think vision boards is like, yeah, yeah, or like, um, hmm, unbeneficial, but for me in my own life, I've used the same thing and maybe not have been on a board per se with, you know, all the bells and whistles, but it was something similar to that. And I've looked back at those things, those, uh, basically those plans that I've, you know, developed on, it was a bigger sheet of paper, but and I've accomplished all those things. So, um, and you can always add to it. You can always take off, you know, sometimes our thoughts and our visions change on what we want our life to look like as we move through life and accomplish and, and accomplish certain things. Okay. So then you got this woman holding a heart. I don't know where I was going with that. Hold on a second. Let me go back to that. Cause I wasn't done talking. Uh, 
over 40. Um, yeah, okay. Um, oh yeah, and keep doing things that support, support your path forward. Um, this is almost like a manifestation or something, something that maybe you've been manifesting, some type of idea, dream, thought, something that you've put a lot of thought into. I feel like that is something that the clouds are going to start clearing. You're going to start to be able to see things, you know, in a more clearer way, like some, you know, Something that you may have been manifesting may have seemed far-fetched, but then it's like something may, like some block may be removed. Something may happen. You may accomplish something, whatever the case may be. And so it's like, oh, that goal seems a little bit more obtainable because, oh, this is moved or this is working out or that, or, oh, I got that job. So now maybe I can move or now I could do this. It's like something's, it's like almost like a domino effect, okay, is going to start taking place. So let's see, number 44. A uh, woman holding a heart. Uh, female dealing with family, love, or emotions. This woman on this card wears a butterfly in her hair and holds a lovely large heart in her hands. For a woman, this card upright could be a reflection of your own state of peaceful emotion and receptivity for love. Or it might be a message that your family issues are going to resolve. You are an intuitive woman who understands the emotions of life and you're bringing that awareness to all that you do. This card upright could also indicate the presence of a female friend, a teacher, or a confidant who's here to help you with issues of love, family, or emotion. This is an even-tempered and caring person who resonates with you and your emotions. You could. Uh, this could also potend for new love interest or a friend coming your way. So man, this could be a woman coming your way um, who is very uh, well-tempered. Uh, what was the word? This could be a female friend or a confidant, but this is uh, for one. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, this is someone who's in a very peaceful and uh, receptive energy for love. Um, for some of you guys, this could talk about family issues, resolving, but this is someone who understands, you know, the emotions of life, the emotions of others, and brings awareness to to those to those things. Okay, so number forty-two, woman holding a coin. Female connection and money, health, and value. The elegantly dressed woman in this card sits in a beautiful chair holding a bright golden coin. When the card comes up right in a woman's reading, it may refer to her directly or and to a successful endeavor regarding her own finances or health. This card could also signal a woman of support or assistance regarding these issues. She may give you financial advice or connect you with someone who does. This woman may be someone who you meet where you make your money, or it may be a woman of wealth and value. Either way, this card is telling you to be on the lookout for helpful assistance or even the possibility of a new love or friendship connected to a woman of wealth or business. So whatever side of this you're on, woman or masculine, you know, feminine or masculine, whoever's here watching, this is, this is a lot of good energy coming in for the first week of august so pay attention all right let's get a few cards I'm just going to be pulling a few oracle cards for this reading this looks really good guys this looks like you know a lot of abundant things are coming in the clouds are starting to move uh blockages are being removed um new connections are coming in your heart is open to new love um receptivity for abundance this is like having you know things being Things that may have been going on for whoever I'm reading for, you guys will know if this is your reading, but things are starting to be removed and things are going to start coming in and falling into place. So this is very beautiful. Yeah, you got love on the bottom of the deck. I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. Okay, so some of you guys have been, you know, I think there was one of these cards that said something about that, but it's removing anything that is negative or that causes any type of negative emotions in your life. And, you know, when you commit to seeing the good in all things, if you don't see good in it, then then don't entertain it, don't deal with it, don't, you know, it's the same with things that bring you anxiety, stress, or conflict, or drama, and choosing to live in a more peaceful state of mind. That's the energy that you're calling in, so automatically you're calling in that. When you decide to disconnect from energies that cause friction, chaos, stress, whatever, then you're opening up new doors. It's like closing old doors and making room for new, you know, better energies to to come in you're calling that in energetically so this is beautiful give me three cards please spirit what else does pisces need to hear for the first week of august it may be pertaining to this and it may not be okay so you got love <laughs> 
I already read it to you guys, but I commit uh, to the practice of seeing the good in all things. And keep in mind, it says practice. This isn't something that you do all night, overnight. Like, okay, I'm going to only entertain good things. You know, obviously in daily life, you can deal with some a-hole on the way to work who, you know, has a chip on his shoulder. Smile and wave, you know, like, I don't know, like, choose not to like... When people come at you with negative energy, hit them with that positive shit and automatically you'll shift their energy. <laughs> and keep in mind that may not work in every circumstance, but it can definitely, if you can practice it and do it 80% of the time, you are ultimately raising your own vibration and the ones around you, okay? All right, so let's see. What else does Pisces need to hear? What do they need to know for the first week of August? If you guys like this reading or it's helping you or giving you any inspiration, insight, guidance, whatever, let me know by hitting that like button. It helps me out a lot. Yeah, you got humor too. That's funny. All right, adversity. I accept that challenges are the best way to learn. So understanding no matter what challenges you're faced with, accepting them not as a challenge, but accepting them as an opportunity to learn can also shift the energy and how, you know, what your outlook and what your response is to certain situations. So then we got the humor card. Oh, you little shit. <laughs> Just like that. I'm a, it's okay, Luna. <laughs> All right, so humor. I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. Yeah, I'm finding the humor in this situation. Uh -huh. All right, so humor. I choose to focus on the lighter side of life, okay? And then honesty. I can't always expect the truth from others, but I can expect it from myself. So if you're dealing with people who aren't completely honest, then, you know... I, I always tell people this. It's like sometimes, you know, when people deceive us, our automatic response is, even me, so I'm no subject to difference. I'm no higher than any of you. Um, but this is, it takes practice to think this way. And I've definitely learned, and I never used to always respond this way. So like I said, I'm not above anybody here. But this is, you know, I used to think, when people hurt us or people deceive us, we always look at that person as the bad guy. Ultimately, once you can learn to look at yourself and realize that, hey, their actions, it, that's their actions. That's not your actions. You can only control your own actions. So if you can think about that, it helps you forgive and learn and outgrow certain people and situations. And I know love is like what the strongest muscle, the heart is the strongest muscle in the body. Love is, you know, conquers all. Love is the most powerful drug. So they say, you know, um, so I get that. So when it comes to matters of the heart, that can definitely be difficult. But ultimately, when when someone hurts us or deceives us or does something effed up to us, and then we look at that person like and, you know, try wish that they understood the way that we felt or wish that they understood what they're doing or wish that they would change. You can't ultimately do anything to make that person do anything. The only thing you can do is change yourself and work on yourself. So. Are you allowing that person to do that? Do you, you know, it's like you got to turn inward and look, okay, am I allowing this person to hurt me? You're, when you let someone, if someone deceives you, that's their own issues. That's their own problem. It has nothing to do with you. You got to look inward and realize, okay, you know, and take accountability for, for the part that you played in that situation. I know there's certain things that I might get backlash for saying this for, but you guys, whoever does backlash, you don't understand. And you need to look within, probably. But and don't take that personal, because I've been there. And I didn't look within, and then I did, you know, after years. <laughs> a lot of people hold a lot of resentment in, our, in your heart for, like, things that people have done that have wronged you or hurt you. When ultimately, that's that own person's flaws. There's nothing that you can do to change that person. But the thing that you can do is change yourself and how you entertain these people, how you react to these people, what you allow these people to do to you. Now, that's what you are in control of. So once you take away that, they don't have no power, you know. Um, and then it can also help you release like that resentment, realizing that, you know, sometimes we give people power, so much power, and then they hurt us. And then we think that they're the bad guy. And hey, they might be the bad guy in the situation. But I'm hearing that song by Nikki Heaton. You can make me the bad guy if it helps you sleep at night. Yeah, so it's like, all right, whatever. Um, but looking at yourself and realizing, hey, you know, 
The only reason that they're the bad guy is because I allowed them to be the bad guy. So if you don't allow them to be the bad guy, then they're not the bad guy, you know? They can be someone else's bad guy. I don't know. Um, and that takes a lot of, like, uh, practice and inner work to kind of look at a situation that way. I know it did me. I struggled with it, but now it's like... All right, I don't really look at people that have hurt me or wronged me. I don't look at them in a negative way anymore like I used to. I used to think, oh, they did this, they did that, they did this, they did that. And now I'm just like, you know, I'm like, whatever. I gave them the power to do that to me. So ultimately, can't be mad at them, you know. But hell, I ain't even mad at myself. I just had to learn from it. And that's what we got adversity. I accept that challenges is the best way to learn, you know. I understand that that challenge, I learned from it. And I'm not going to allow that shit no more, you know. All right, let's move on. Let's get a few more messages for Pisces. Y'all be sure to let me know if that helped you or gave you a different perspective on anything. All right, Pisces. What do we got for Pisces? Messages, please, for Pisces. Three cards that can help them moving forward into the month of August. So you got Lord Shiva, Transcendence, Rise Above. Oh, Rise Above. <laughs> Rise above, honor your inner force, steps are being given, dance with the universe, okay? So rise above, okay, transcend above these obstacles, uh, honor your inner force, like in, honor your inner God power, okay? Steps are being given, dance with the universe. So, you know, um, whatever obstacles you're faced with, dance around them, figure out, you know, don't get stressed, and you know, and I understand some things are stressful, and I understand everybody has different circumstances, but it's about a mind perspective, you know? I go through stressful shit, too, and I used to get myself all worked up. I was like, oh, my God, and now I'm just like, okay, I'm going to handle that, you know? Cool. You know, and it actually makes the situation go a lot easier, but all right, so we got the Miriam Sacred Vision, Choose... <laughs> Choose to forgive in order to heal. See the light in all. Remember that love has no boundaries. Thank you. Okay. See the light in all. Choose to forgive in order to heal. Yes, ma'am. All right. Then we got Lady Venus. Downloads and understanding. Hence, you have this third or sixth chakra, Archangel Metatron, which is your third eye. So downloads and understanding, truth is being revealed, deep insights are coming from the heaven and the astral realm. So pay attention to, you know, uh, your third eye, your visions, your thoughts, okay? Um, being aware. You guys could be receiving, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. You guys could be receiving, be receiving a lot of downloads during this first week of August, so pay attention. Um... And that's crazy because I, I realized the other morning, I normally remember my dreams, at least right when I wake up and then I forget them. So I haven't been remembering my dreams, but like halfway through the day, something will happen and I will remember clips of it. And I'm like, holy shit, I dreamt that last night. And I'll remember that part of the dream. But I when I wake up, I have no conscious like recollection, but something throughout the day will trigger that memory. And it's super weird. It's been it's happened like three times in the last two days. So anyways, uh, Nikki Heaton just came on my playlist. Not the same song, but same artist. Anyways, I'm done with that. Deck. OK, uh, let's get a few Moonology cards since we're coming up on a full moon in uh, Aquarius. Aquarius is also about your thoughts, your communication. OK. So let's see. One minute in Aquarius. Let's see. Messages for Pisces. What else do they need to hear? And then we're going to be getting some from the angel answers and close this reading out. Oh, I don't like to. The answers you need are coming. Full moon in Gemini and you are good enough. Full moon in Virgo. So some type of answers may be coming in. Virgo or Gemini may be significant. Um, let's see. Thank you. Oh, that was two. I'm not doing this. We're not doing this for it. Single cards only, please. We're not doing it. Single cards, you know how I roll. No funny business. All right, thank you. And it is time to take action, new moon in Aries. 
So there may be something here that you're needing to take action on, Pisces. For all of you guys, it's going to be different. So I don't know what that is. Um, grab life by the balls. No, <laughs> grab life by the horns. Okay, not by the balls. But anyways. All right, thank you. We also got step out of your comfort zone. Yeah, grab life by the balls. Okay, and it is time to release negativity. Full moon in Scorpio. Your commitment is being tested. So like I said before, earlier in this reading, keep going. Your, you know, uh, your determination has not gone on unnoticed. Something is being divinely orchestrated. It's being set up for you behind the scenes, and I feel like it will be coming in here soon. Um, your commitment is being tested, so stay, uh, I heard proactive, but stay, um, not committed, but stay, yeah, maybe committed. Stay committed to what it is that you're working towards, okay? Don't give up. Step out of your comfort zone. There may be a need for you to take, um, Take action on something that maybe seems uncomfortable to you or maybe something that you've been procrastinating on. You may need to take action. And again, of course, this whole reading was about releasing negativity. A lot of it was, not the whole reading. But um, releasing negativity, full moon in Scorpio. Okay, pro <laughs> prosperity lies ahead. Yes, it does. Cornucopia, baby. <laughs> All right, so let's get a few angel answer cards. I might just pull one more. Where are we at? Okay, sorry. Let's get a few angel answers. So, question that Pisces may be asking. Holy Spirit, angels, angels, and guides, my throat is dry. My throat is dry. Okay. Answer, answers to Pisces questions, Holy Spirit. What do you got? Three cards, please. Question Pisces may be asking to themselves if you believe the more helpful people, big happy changes, reconsider. So there may be something that you're needing to reconsider, an opportunity. Oh my gosh, I can't even make this shit up, yo. This is like cornucopia. Prosper, pro, like you guys got something coming in here. Opportunity, something, it's going to be a windfall, okay? There may be something, too, that you may need to be proactive about. I did hear that. Helpful people, that's that community card. So there could be, you know, this could even be hidden helpers from the astral realm, okay, coming in to help. This could be community. This could be friends. Some type of assistance is coming in for you, Pisces. Big happy changes lie ahead. I am going to pull one card from the Sacred Forest Oracle deck. I typically use these in personal readings. Those who have gotten a personal reading from me, you know that. Okay? You know that they are super accurate. I've never used them really in the collective, but we'll see. Maybe this message will resonate with you guys for the collective. All right, the Pisces. Whoever this reading is resonating with spirit, can you give me one card? A message that they need to take going into the first week of August. Y'all be sure to hit that like button, y'all. Thank you. Okay, so we've got the crystal, the crystal cave, which talks about trust. I don't know if I've ever read this card before. Okay, number nine. We did see a lot of nines over here. Or was that the last reading? I don't know. They're buried. Okay, the crystal cave. It's beautiful. Reminds me of like manifestation. Okay, crystal cave, trust. Caves have long been considered secret passageways Two sacred powers and forces. There was a movie we watched about that, and that's true. Okay. There's like a big cave in South America that there was like, what was it? Gold, honey? What? Remember that movie we watched in that big cave in South America? Was it gold? Oh, I know what movie that was. Outer Banks, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, squirrel. Okay, caves have been considered secret pas passageways to sacred powers and forces. Certain shamic initiations occurred in caves because they were thought to be places where your intuition could be activated. The appearance of this card is a message to believe in your intuition, no matter where it takes you. Have faith in yourself and know that you are divinely guided. Even when you have doubts, trust your feelings about others and about situations. You are exactly where you need to be. 
Trust. This is the foundation of the ability to manifest. Everything was created because someone believed that it was possible. Yes, Pisces, if you believe, Shadi. Okay, sorry. Um, and patience is absolutely crucial in the application of, the, of this principle. Change can happen in a heartbeat, but some things require time. Please be patient and know that it will happen. Whatever receives your care and attention will flourish. Believe you have planted your seeds. Now give them time to grow. In cultures throughout the world, the cave represents the womb, the source of life. They are where early humans sought shelter and protection. In the depth of the cave, know that you are safe and protected. The spirit of the crystal cave says you can let go and allow your clear, focused intuition to free to flow freely, follow the nudges from your soul, listen to others, and trust your instincts. Thanks, Luna. And trust your instincts. Okay, so again, with this intuition and your third eye, trust. Okay, Pisces, trust that you are right where you need to be. Also, and again, whatever seeds that you've been planting, this is, this is why I told you these cards are so freaking accurate. It's like... I mean, all my cards are pretty accurate, but I, I really find a fondness in this deck. Um, it basically just kind of summed up a lot of the things that we talked about. Whatever you can create, it is possible. But some things can happen in the in, in a heartbeat. Other things, other things need patience. It takes time, just like the Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles talks about time. It takes time. The seeds that you planted will come into fruition, but you need to nurture it so that it grows. Keep nurturing the same, whatever it is that you're working towards, keep working towards that. It'll come in, you're planting seeds. It just takes, some things take patience. Some things, you know, can happen overnight. Um, especially if you believe, and that's another thing. Everything that was ever made by man came from a thought. Third eye, it came from a thought, and it was because someone believed that they could make it, they could do it, and it, and people have done it over the years, you know? It's like Tesla, you know, Elon Musk thought that he could make a whatever car, electric car or whatever. He did it, right? Um, anyways, I'm going to leave this reading here, y'all. I hope it resonated. I hope it gave you guys some type of clarity, hope, inspiration for the week ahead. If it did, let me know by hitting that thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.